speaking of problems, Gooligan, which I guess must be what happens when you take hooligan and Googleize it, you get Gooligan. I, I mean, I guess that's the de derivation of this name. Uh, Checkpoint is in the news again. Um, they've they've essentially reverse engineered so a mystery which th I think they have pretty much figured out what's been going on, which is a campaign which has been taking advantage of users who make the mistake of of loading things into their Android phones from third party non Google Play sites. So that's the source of the problem. More and it's estimated that more than uh, now I'm seeing one million. Oh, I knew I said I saw two. Uh, because logs collected by checkpoint researchers show that every day Gooligan installs at least thirty thousand apps fraudulently, and I'll explain what that means because it's installing them as a means of getting of making money for the hackers, which is an interesting twist, which of course create provides their motivation uh, on breach devices or over two million apps since the campaign began. So there's two million apps and they've they've tracked a compromise of as many as one million Google accounts. So the the checkpoint, blog starts out saying, as a result of a lot of hard work done by our security research teams, we revealed today, and this was last week, a new and alarming malware campaign. The attack campaign named Gooligan breached the security of over 1 million Google accounts. The number continues to rise at an additional 13,000 breached devices each day. Our research exposes how the malware roots infected devices and steals authentication tokens that can then be used to access data from Google Play, Gmail, Google Photos, Google Docs, G Suite, <laughs> Google Drive, and more. Gooligan is a new variant of the Android malware campaign found by they, they say our researchers, Checkpoint researchers, in the Snap P app last year. So this began, as these things so much so often do, as sort of an isolated instance. And then it got, sometimes it's militarized or weaponized or commercialized. Um, Checkpoint reached out to Google, uh, the Google security team, immediately with information about the campaign. And they say our researchers are, researchers are working closely with Google to investigate the source of the Gooligan. So what they found was traces of this Gooligan malware code in dozens, and I saw the number 86 as I was digging into this, of legitimate looking apps on third party Android app stores. These stores are an attractive alternative, as we know, to Google Play uh, for those who are not security conscious because many of the apps are free or offer free versions of paid apps. However, the security of these stores, as we know, and the apps they sell aren't always verified or we might say are not verified. Gooligan infected apps can also be installed using phishing scams where so you, so it's not just users going to a third party store or or following a recommendation from a friend oh go 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 get this over here but uh, it could just be a phishing campaign that that gets this thing into your phone so the way this makes money is that the malware simul once the malware is in your phone it simulates app advertisements provided by legitimate ad networks causing the apps to install on a, on the victim's device. So you first install this, this covertly malicious Gooligan infected app. Um, and, you know, who knows what the backstory is there? I mean, there's 86 of them. So you have to sort of wonder if the Gooligan people aren't maybe paying for co-residents in these apps 
if or I mean, maybe they're creating themselves from scratch, but that seems a little less likely than, hey, we'll give you some money if you'll, you know, <laughs> put this little extra goodie in, in your app that's not going to go through the Google Play Store, which would allow Google to spot it and remove it. So the the once the the phone is infested, it then downloads additional apps for which the Gooligan malware authors are paid by the ad network, by the legitimate ad network, when one of those apps is in, one or more are installed successfully. So this affects Android 4 devices, Jelly Bean and KitKat, and 5, Lollipop, uh, which encompasses more than three quarters of the market devices today. Um, and the, the preponderance of them, about 57%, are located in Asia with about 9% in Europe. So um, essentially that's what's going on. Now what's significant is that what Gooligan downloads uh, – after Gooligan gets into the phone, uh, it sends data about the device to the campaigns, that is the Gooligan campaigns, command and control server. It then downloads a rootkit from the command and control server that takes advantage of multiple well-known but typically unpatched Android 4 and 5 exploits – including one named vroot and it's got this the cve designation starting with 2013 so it's 3 years old and that doesn't matter as we know the older android phones or in some cases not so old phones that just aren't being maintained by their providers won't be updated and the other one is the other common one is what one known as towel root that has a CVE dated 2014. So in both cases, these exploits still plague many devices today because security patches that fix them may not be available for some versions of Android or the patches were never installed by the user or never offered by the by the bandwidth provider. So if the routing is successful, the attacker has full control of the device and can execute privileged commands remotely. So it's a full remote access takeover of this breathtaking number of Android uh, devices. After achieving root, Gooligan downloads another new malicious module from the command and control server and installs it on the, the infected device. That module injects code into running Google Play and Google Mobile services to mimic user behavior. So, so, so sort of like a, some, a, a little automation shim uh, that allows Gooligan to avoid detection. Um, and that's been seen uh, historically on other mo mobile malware. Um, that module allows Gooligan to steal a user's Gmail email account and authentication token information, install apps from Google Play, and rate them to raise their reputation. It gives all the apps five-star ratings after it, it downloads them uh, and installs adware, which generates revenue. So, of course, the ad servers, which don't know whether an app using its service is malicious or not, sends Gooligan the names of the apps to download from Google Play. So the whole system sort of forms a self-sustaining ecosystem, which is, which is catastrophically rooting and infecting vulnerable Android devices uh, while generating revenue for the miscreants behind it and continuing to support itself. So unfortunately, it's, you know, and we've watched the evolution of this over time. You know, 10 years ago, several years into this podcast, we were sort of musing how, isn't it interesting that all the Outlook viruses that we were covering back then, you know, they never really seemed to do anything except just exist. Um, but the moment we saw this pay to unlock your encrypted data crypto malware, suddenly it became clear, as we predicted on the podcast, 
we're going to be seeing a lot more of this because as soon as, you know, this goes from, oh, look, Ma, what I was able to do after school to, oh, look at the size of my bank account, uh, that really changes the equation. And so here again is, is a way of leveraging the, the internet advertising revenue system. And we, and we've seen, you know, uh, fraudulent clicks and so forth uh, and, uh, performed by scripting and browsers and, and that, uh, this now, of course, also your, your, your phone is hooked into a command and control server. And remember that the fact that it's obtaining, it's obtaining fresh code means that that allows them to dynamically vary what this sort of this ad hoc network of rooted devices will do. So there, you know, more than a million of them are currently doing this, but uh, they can change that apparently at will. And, uh, you know, it's not clear. I guess these phones are stranded. I don't know how Google ever really resolves this for people, except, you know, they just, the phones die finally and they get newer ones, which hopefully have an additional four years worth of security learning under their belt. Wow.